I don't know if you want to start off with like a little thing, but like I'll probably just like um, start it off. Yeah, do it. <laughs> Fuck it. I'll just I'll just follow you. All right, I'll just okay. All right. Three, two, one. What's up, guys? Um, welcome to the Instant Ramen Podcast. Today with me, as you can see, I have my first guest ever. Our What's, going? What's up? What's going on? It's uh, going good. Yeah, yeah. It's going good. I've seen you after five years. So it's, yeah, uh, man. It's been, it's been a very long time. <laughs> it's been a really, really long, long time, time man. I, I remember, I think, the last time I saw you, it was kind of like when school ended. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, after that, we've just kind of been doing our own thing. Right, I think it was like March 2013. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so like a year and five, five and a half years ago. Holy shit. Yeah, man. It's been a really it's a long time. Why don't you tell the people what you've been up to? Okay. So, uh, him and I, we went to high school together yep. and, um, after high school, you went straight to Buffalo, right? Yeah. That's yeah. Correct. yeah. So you went to Buffalo in September of 2013. Yep. Mm -hmm. I went to Toronto in September of 2013 Okay. and we were kind of like, I, we, I think we, kind of studied the same thing and we we're in university for the same thing right. buffalo isn't too far from toronto either so i i remember that like there were a few times initially where like you know you you go to a new country where you don't know a lot of people so you try mm -hmm. to connect with the people you already kind of know right right and there were a few times when i was passing by buffalo actually going shopping in buffalo because the taxes are super cheap oh yeah because yeah, no like <laughs> there's literally no tax yeah, yeah. um do you remember like whereabouts like Erie or like Erie, right? Erie. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it, it was like the the open mall kind okay, of thing, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I've been there a couple um, times. And then there was a few times when I passed by Buffalo to go to Grove City in Pennsylvania. Oh, okay. Right, again shopping. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so in my mind, I was like, "Yo, I gotta hit you up," but then yeah, it yeah. never happened because we're like a day and back. All oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, man, it can get confusing. Right. Um, but yeah, so I graduated from there okay. uh, last year, so in June, yeah, and got back to Dubai June of last June of twenty seventeen. Now, before you talk yeah. about like coming back to Dubai, I just wanted to ask you when you first, because when I went to Buffalo the first time, I kind of I had a breakdown where I kind of bawled my eyes out. Oh and no I was, way! Yeah, I, I was like, where are the buildings? Because I came straight from Dubai, and I was oh, like, where shit, are the skyscrapers? Right, right. Yeah, I was yeah. so used to like the city life. Right. I go there, and it's just kind of like kind of ghetto ratchet, but like also. Now that I've been there for so long, it has a homely feel. For sure. Yeah. You're like, yo, this is it. Like, this is home. Right, right, right. And my mom's like, just try to get used to it. We're in a motel. I'm right. looking at my university from across the motel. Gotcha. And I'm yeah, like, yeah. what is going on? This isn't like the place that's the that craziest I... thing. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I'm picturing New York City. Oh, and, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then I come there and I'm like, oh my God. So I just wanted to get your opinion on like, how was it when you first went and. Right. Started? Okay. So I have like a very. I have kind of a very different perspective because of what happened when I went to Canada. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people when they move from the UAE or like wherever they are to North America for university, mm -hmm. most of them tend to live on campus, okay. right? I was lucky enough to have a very large family base in Canada, including my mother's older brother. Oh. So my uncle, yeah. Um, so I actually lived with my cousins for two years okay. and they lived in the suburbs. So it was a nice big house, really cool place. Yeah. And it was, a gay, it was like a great contrast because my university was right in the middle of downtown. I went to Ryerson, mm -hmm. which is right in the middle of downtown, almost felt like you were at Times Square. Cause oh. it was like the, it was at Dundas Square okay. and, the, and Dundas Square is kind of like the Times Square of Canada, oh, right? Okay. Off, off Toronto at least. Right, right, right. Um, and so from the aspects of like living in Dubai where everything is super fast paced, um, there's high rise buildings, you're kind of used to the concrete jungle. Mm -hmm. That aspect going to university never changed because that's what I saw every, every day. So it kind of felt like I was still in Dubai, right. just with a lot more white people. Yeah, that right? it was a trip. It was literally <laughs> a lot more white people, a lot more like, like people on crack cocaine trying to come up to you and ask you for like money. Oh yeah. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and then I've been when, to McDonald's in Buffalo. Oh before. dude, it was oh, yeah, holy shit. I remember like, I was so freaked out the first two weeks that I was there yeah. just seeing it. Cause a lot of people asked me if I had a, if, 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 if I had like a culture shock right? and it wasn't really a culture shock. Cause you know, this living in Dubai, we're exposed to a lot of people from different parts of the world. Mm -hmm. So the culture shock isn't so much of like interacting with people from different places. Yeah. It's more of getting used to the lifestyle yeah. and the type of society that's in that place. Right, right. So I was comfortable with everything except for the amount of like homeless people and people that are on the streets. Mm. Cause you don't see that here. Exactly. Like you, there's, there's, there's no one here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, 
so yeah, that was that. And then, so my university was in the middle of downtown, which was great. Okay. And my cousins lived in Brampton, which is another city in Ontario. So about you used an, to commute back and forth? I, I, used to, I used to commute. And Brampton was a completely different thing. It was kind of like your Beverly Hills, 90210, ah, right? Like right. big, big house, you know, green streets, quiet. So it was a great contrast between like coming back from the city mm-hmm. to a place that's like very, I imagine this is what like, kids that go to Repton or like these schools here face right, right, right. where they're like oh yeah let's go to the you know the <laughs> yeah. Dubai mall and like be with a bunch of people and then go home to like a huge fucking mansion right, right, right. It's, it's it's kind of like I almost felt like that kind of a feeling okay um but yeah I think my adjustment process was pretty eased out mm-hmm. I didn't have a lot of problem fitting in yeah. um yeah and um yeah. after that you said you came back to Dubai Right. And what was that like? What did you do after that? Did you, you got a job and... Right. So, okay, I'm going to back, backtrack a little bit to, to tell you what exactly happened. Yep. Um, so while I was in Canada, you know this, in high school, I used to dance. Yeah, really yeah. Have, pop and right? block yeah. and things of that. All that yeah. good stuff. <sighs> um, when I was in Canada, I m- used to interact with a lot of people from the fashion industry, from the music industry, and like these were up and coming artists. The so dance we, uh, in an industry as well, like the dance um, Not so much dance because, um, you know, I, I kind of wasn't really exposed to that, but more of like the, the, the music side. The best part about living and not even living, but like commuting in downtown. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. so two years I lived with my cousins and then two years I lived in downtown. Okay. Right, so I used to, I lived in I lived downtown for the last two years of uni, basically. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, it was great because when you're living in a place that's like a melting pot of everyone from around the world of different skills and talents, mm. different kind of art backgrounds, mm-hmm. you meet a lot of people in that. So I met a lot of um, people from the fashion industry, music industry, right, right. artists, photographers, um, filmmakers. And different were, walks of right, life. Right, like different, different walks of like life. Like a curry, there's like so many spices. For sure. Like and it was human, your cardamom, right? Exactly. And yeah. it was great because my my cousin, um, Ferdin, who I lived with mm. my first two years, he is an automotive photographer, like one of the best in the city. Oh, okay. Um, and so I actually took up photography because of him, okay. right? I initially took it up as like a hobby i was like yo it's cool that he's doing it i kind of want to get on it right do it for the gram right like do it do it because before it was just like pictures of me with a weird instagram filters (laughs) right um and then i was like yo it's kind of cool how like he's meeting all these people through his art and he's growing and he's getting gigs i kind of want to do that so i initially took it up as a hobby Yeah, yeah yeah um so i started shooting when i moved downtown what happened was i started getting paid for gigs And I started getting paid for gigs for up-and-coming musicians, for um, people in the fashion industry if they needed shoots. And what happened towards the end of my university life, like the last, I want to say, eight months to a year, Mm -hmm. was I started getting, I started working with a lot of brands. So brands used to come to me through Instagram and say, hey, we're like an up-and-coming brand. Um, Do you want to shoot with us? Um, You know, here's the budget, models and stuff. Right. Yeah. and that was a great way to kind of earn money as well. And as what, well as what, like what are some of the most like well-known brands that you, you would say you've worked with? Um, okay, so one of them, I think the most well-known in the city itself mm-hmm. um, was a music school. Okay. Um, and it was um, Harris Institute of Music. Okay. Uh, and I met a lot of cool people from there. So what used to happen was I used to work with musicians from that school mm-hmm. um, and go, if, if they used to be, you know, they used to have concerts, they used to do music videos, behind the scenes, album art. Right. And so I used to kind of work with them. I worked with about three or four of them. Oh, okay. Um, and did all that stuff for them. So if they had a gig, I would go to the place and like do a shoot and, you know, um, so it was great kind of meeting people. And I kind of realized this down the line is what happened after, like th- through the process of meeting all these people, Yeah. Not only was my craft getting better and better, mm. but my perception of what the industry is completely changed. It grew and it, it grew and it, and it expanded to a point where I realized everyone, no matter the form of art you're in, yeah. is kind of in the same pot when you're coming up. Right, right. right, right. And I realized this that it's much more important to maintain relationships mm-hmm. and to maintain the spirit of collaboration yeah rather than look at the monetary benefit at least for a while right 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 yeah and that kind of paid off and it's, it's paying off now where this girl that i worked with kelsey mm. uh who's a musician mm-hmm. she is now doing really big gigs 
in the city of Toronto and she's blowing up, her music's out, she's on radio. Yeah. Um, shout out Kelsey. Um, <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's great to see like someone that I met randomly through someone. Right. Um, is now like blowing up and she's still using the images that I took in, in her album art. Yeah. And I may be like across, you know, the world's doing something completely different now. Hmm. But the connection that we made over like the time that we worked together um, is kind of still continuing now in a weird way through social media and through the digital aspect of it. Right. So yeah, like it's, it's, it's great to see people you know, kind of improving in the whole thing. Right, right, right. Um, no, I definitely yeah, agree yeah. with the uh, collaboration aspect, man. When I was, uh, I used to animate a bunch in Buffalo, oh, yeah. so I would like make uh, animations about my life when I was oh, really sure, into yeah, that and yeah. stuff yeah. like that. And, you know, kind of based off my frat experiences and what will go on in these like parties and no stuff way. like that. Yeah. And there was a Buffalo uh, <clears throat> local rapper by the name of Breeze Fiend. Oh, and shit. <laughs> he, yeah. he, um, he, he was like, hey, man, if you want, I will give you like a song of mine. And no if you way. wanted whatever you okay. wanted, you could animate on top of that. Right. And I was like, dude, I see the vision. Like, you know, I'm going to like right. totally like draw onto it. I had no idea how much work it would be. But oh, I, I agree right. with you so much in the fact that collaboration helps grow your art because when you have another person with you, oh, you, you also have like this kind of sense of responsibility of finishing the project. Oh and yeah, that, dude. That yeah. like it helps so much because when you're by yourself, you have to really push yourself to be dedicated and motivated. Well, for sure, because you know? it's like a solo thing, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you're working with someone else, there's always this like kind of time limit that you have. You're like, should right. I need to give this person the finished product? Exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so so that was it. Um, even my friend group. So my one of my really good friends, Francesco. Yeah. Uh, who's who came to Canada when I was in my third year. So I started okay. living in downtown at this point. Mm. He was an international student from Italy. Okay. A filmmaker. So he went to Toronto Film School. Yeah, yeah. And great dude. Like one of my really, really close friends. Even now, you know. Um, so now he's actually working for the media company owned by Chris Hatfield. Chris Hatfield oh, is the first no Canadian shit. astronaut to go to space. Wow. So the company's run by Chris's son. Francesco now travels the worlds with Evan, Chris's son, makes yeah. videos around the world. Um, and yeah, uh, I'm not too sure. He, he's in Italy now on his yeah. break, but he had his like Far East tour. He had a South American tour. He went to Albania, a bunch of other places. He's been with for like a year and a half now. Oh, that's crazy. Right, so man. it's yeah. great to see like people that you kind of come come up with, Yeah. Like, right? They're doing really well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and um, yeah. just going back to the dance aspect, man, I just remember that like you were so kind of, you know, <sighs> fluid with the whole thing oh yeah and <laughs> Jesus <Christ. laughs> probably lost sneezing in the right. background there. and um you like there that was one thing that i was kind of always very um i always admired a lot jesus christ <laughs> yeah. somebody's a tissue bro <laughs> what do you have a stroke <laughs> 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 just like yeah. like, no. and, uh, <laughs> give the person an advil yeah. or like a tissue box at least or like, like a, a, right Oh man, um, and um, one right, thing so the that, dance, like, yeah, 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 yeah. So I really admired it because I don't have, I have very poor motor skills, I would say, in the sense oh, of like yeah. my, my hand eye coordination. So yeah. I remember it, we even had like in high school, we had a um, we had a dance thing coming up, and I went, I came for auditions with you guys, and dude, I just felt so out of place because uh, like yeah. you, you were like do this one basic move, oh, and right. I was in the back of the class, and I like tried to do it, but I just came off like. Dude, it was uh, like stiff. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like you I know had what's a cramp, right? Like got out of bed and I was like, what's like really down. strange is when I look back at like the different art forms that I have. Yeah. It was always an inspiration behind it. I was generally a person. Okay. So I started dancing because of these two people, Fred and Akram. Okay. In high school, and I remember I was in like grade eight, and Akram was probably in like grade ten. Yeah. yeah. And I saw him dance. I was like, yo, this is kind of what I want to do. Ah. Right? And so it was this like inspirational factor after seeing someone. Same with photography. Like right, with right. my cousin Ferdine, I saw him shooting and his work coming out great. I'm like, yo, this is what I want to do. Yeah. With dance, it was kind of like till high school with photography, it's carrying on now because that's a part of, you know, my my work here. Right, right, is right. production and content creation. But um So you said over here you've been um working with a group, um, the Isa Salo Gurg. Yeah. Um and yeah. you um also got a couple of um opportunities from Canada. I and did, yeah, yeah. So what what was the whole experience of like juggling between staying here or going back to Canada? <clears throat> right. So after I graduated I had 
two job offers in Canada mm-hmm. um, that were like the normal job offers any fresh graduate would get right after university. So it wasn't like a crazy package, a crazy paycheck, right. but it was something in my field, something that really interested me. And if it meant that I could stay in Canada, hey, like, mm. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll take it, I'll make it work. Um, so the funny thing is I actually got back here to Dubai um, to visit my parents okay. last year in June. Okay. And when I was here, I told the two companies that I'm going back to Dubai for about two or three weeks. Right. And in a week to 10 days, I'm going to let you know if I'm joining or not. Okay. Right. So the plan was to come back here. And in the first week that I'm here, mm-hmm. select one of the job offers that I have mm-hmm. and go back to Canada after two or three weeks of me being here and start working there. Okay. On my second day here, I get an email from the company I'm working with now saying, would you like to come in for an interview? Mm. So in my mind, it was, it was a very big change because I had already made up my mind of going back. Right. I had no intention to, you know, come back here. Right. So for me to go for that interview was more experiential rather than a job seeking opportunity. Mm. Cause in my mind I was already secure with the opportunities that I had there. Right, right. right. It was more like let's go see what this is about and see what the work culture is about. Mm-hmm. Just to get a little bit of an understanding. Um <clears throat> so I go in for the job interview. And um, the interview, the first interview was with, uh, with a lady who's my boss now. And I honestly winged it. Like, I was like, yo, I'm not moving back here, so I'm just going to wing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's kind of the ones where you stand nothing to lose. Those are the interviews oh, that yeah. go the best. I right, because I literally said, you know, I spoke my mind. And I mean, I was 22 when I came here, so I was very young. I didn't... Also, okay, this is what I feel is the hiring process is really weird Um, process because what happens is a lot of the times especially here like in this region your experience counts more than your skill yeah right so if you have nothing to base it off of Mm -hmm. they will all they will always go for um, the person who has more experience that generally happens right 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 Um, so I didn't tell you this actually before I came back here to visit my parents I applied to 85 jobs in the UAE in my last year of uni okay and I got a call from one yeah uh, in about April, okay. and it was a really rude email saying, please don't be late for an interview. And oh, they, yeah. they like scheduled my interview for me. And I was like, yo, fuck that shit. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna, yeah. yeah. Um, so I got back here and I went in for the interview. And what's what's crazy is um, my my boss, mm-hmm. she, when she was interviewing me, she asked me this thing. She's like, I, I remember, you know, when she asked me, she's like, um, do you have a lot of job offers here? And I was honest. I was like, no, I don't. Right. And I'll be, and I said, I'll, I'll be honest, I think over here, your age is taken before your skill or your okay. talent. Yeah, very true. And she, and she agreed. So I think she kind of took a gamble on me um, okay. to kind of work for the company. Because like, man, 22 years old, no proper professional background experience, right. working for a corporation this big with a great work culture. Right. So she took a gamble. Um, but once I got into it, her, like she... Um, once I kind of got into it, I realized that they promote talent okay. and they, they, they promote people with the necessary skill, no matter your age. Okay. My second interview happened. It was great. I got offered the job. It was a, you know, it was a, it was a good package, really liked the company. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, in my mind, and this all happened like a period of a week, right? right. Where I was like, shit, I'm going to, when I came to Dubai, mm-hmm. I was like, I'm going to go back to Canada. And by the end of that week, I was like, shit like i'm staying here yeah yeah yeah. it was a complete 180 where like no one knew that i was not gonna come back right to canada canada and so i decided to stay here um and yeah i kind of like weighed the pros and cons decided to stay here so are you ever going back is, is, is i don't know man um i feel like I have moved around so much throughout my life. Right. Born in India at the age of one, moved to Kenya, mm. lived in Seychelles um, t- from the age of three to the age of seven. Wow. Lived in Dubai from the age of 10. Sorry, lived in Seychelles from the age of three to 10. Yeah. Seven years in, in Seychelles. And then moving around Africa a lot. Um, and then Dubai from 10 to 18, Canada from like 18 to 22. Mm. So I, it's really weird where I feel like the most comfortable I am is on a plane. Okay. Like yeah, nothing, yeah. nothing feels like home at this point. Right, right, right. You know, it's such a weird thing where I 
start getting too I start getting a little nervous if I'm in a place for too long. Right. No, I completely right? get that, man. I'm I'm the same way because I was born here. Um, I've gone and stayed in India for a bunch, right. and then <clears> I've <throat> gone to the U.S. and I came back. It's kind of like a nomadic experience oh, yeah. for us, and it's kind of like at a point you're just like, who am I? For sure. Because you're like, you know, always transitioning. Yeah, it's like the third and, um, culture thing where you're so used to being in different situations where you cannot get accustomed to one situation. For sure, for right? sure. And so you're always thinking of what my next move is going to be. Yes. And f in your mind, nothing's permanent. Yeah. So when I think of going back to Canada, I know that if I get, you know, if I move back, it's going to be like, that's it. Yeah. And yes, that's great because it's a great place to live. But at the back of my kind of scares it's me. It's kind of scary because you're staying in one place Because I'm like, yo, again. shit, like this is the one place that I'm going to be for the rest of my life. Right, right, right. right. Um, and all, like, obviously that may not be the case. I may move somewhere, you know, somewhere else. If I want to, but generally people that move to Canada don't leave Canada. Okay. Right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's for the future. Right now, I'm really happy here. Like, right. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm very content. I feel like it was a really weird move for me to come back. Yeah. And a lot of people question, like, you know, there's like family members are like, oh, why did you come back? And I was like, yo, what? fuck out of here, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, Get up off my right. business. They're always like asking you what your next move is going to be. Right. You're like trying to figure it out. Yourself. Exactly. And I feel like in this process, probably the most supportive person, I mean, obviously, you know, aside of my, my, my parents, because right, they're right. always supportive, but my cousin, Ferdine, mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're kind of the same age and we've had the same experiences and he's almost like a best friend, right? Okay. Not is almost he like he, filmmaking as well. Oh yeah. He's great. Like he's one of the best, most talented people in terms of production I've ever seen. Oh, okay. Insane. Like just a crazy, crazy, crazy dude personality wise skill just like oh an overall nice dude right sick, sick. and so i remember speaking to him when this happened he's like yo listen um your your lifestyle and your your personality fits canada right right but if if dubai is a transition for you to reach the stage that you want to reach mm -hmm. then take the plunge Right. Right. Yeah. And that really hit me because I was kind of looking at the short term. Yeah. And him and my dad both made me think about the long term, mm -hmm. that how moving here could be beneficial as opposed to staying there just because I want to get my PR or my citizenship. Of course. Of right. Course. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it was it was crazy. I've been back for like, what, 13, 14 months now. I've been working here, living here. Yeah. It's been in like a really, really good experience. I've learned a lot. Oh, yeah. Like my... The team that I work with is just the craziest team. Most talented bunch of people okay. work in like high stress situations, and like I kind of become accustomed to that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, no, yeah. I remember um, was great. the reason why I kind of wanted you on this podcast in the first place is I, I remember one of the first experiences I had with you, and which was an interaction, was oh, yeah. we were kind of in, in this mall location, and we were all our friends were doing this thing where we, they were like, I guess aspiring entrepreneurs or something. They were like, oh selling shit, stuff. yo, yeah, it was the that? fucking yeah, yeah. YEC young YEC. young entrepreneur competition. Oh yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So we were just hanging around there. And I remember, like, I, at that point, I wasn't, like, very socially adept. And I wouldn't, like, approach strangers as much, I guess. It was oh, I know what you're like, talking about. Yeah, you oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. Yo, it's when we, like, picked up or yeah, we yeah. got, like, we, numbers, we, we, right? Yeah, yeah, we got some numbers. And the thing that was crazy about that was... Um, before that, I had no experience in doing this, but kind of watching you and feeding off of your energy, I felt like right. we had very, we worked together very, very oh, yeah. well yeah. in terms of like approaching random strangers and putting them at ease. Oh, for sure. And so it was, it was really cool because uh, before that point, I hadn't approached like uh, people and just got their numbers yeah. and stuff like that. But we just kind of like the one thing I realized from those interactions and I learned was just to be yourself, funny, charismatic, and open. Oh, yeah. And you know, try yeah. not to try not to get anything from the interaction, but just try to make the other person's day better. Oh, for sure. And dude, yeah. I walked away with more numbers that week than I. Had you know what? My entire right. life. So. It's so it's so crazy because like when you mentioned, I completely. By the way, completely like for, forgot that's the first oh, time yeah. we actually properly hung out. Yeah. And that's what's really strange is in our group there were a lot of people that I knew better than you. Right. Right. Yep. Of course. Um, but towards the end of like the week that we were there, yeah, it was so weird because like I felt like the person that I got along the best was was you, right, right. right. Um, yeah, and it was just like the strangest thing where like no one was ready to do the stuff that we did. Yeah, but we bullshit. I remember this one person. You, 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 do you still draw? Yeah, yeah, you, you illustrate, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah. illustrate. I draw. Right. Yeah. Um, so I remember you, you made a painting and you framed it. Yeah, yeah. And there was a guy that came up. <laughs> And he's like, oh, how much for this painting? And like, I was kind of, I was, um, I was, I was like cocky on my game, right? Right, right, right. So I was like, oh, my, so the frame is Brazilian oak wood. Don't even know what the fuck Brazilian <laughs> oak wood is. I don't even know if it's a real thing. 
and I was like, it's Bruce Lee and Oakwood, and the artist is... It's the made art- with the tears right. of, like, <laughs> it's fucking, like Just adjective on adjective, <laughs> yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah. Um, like, the elegance and the smoothness <laughs> yeah. and the, like, curvature of the wood. Right. And the dude was... I felt like for a while, he was like, yo... He was heavily people, concerned. Oh, yeah, he's yeah, like, yo, yeah. these people, like, maybe legit. Right. And then he saw the painting, and he saw the sign, and I remember he asked you your name, so he asked us... Our, like our names and mm-hmm. he thought it's from like an artist right right like an like an artist artist yeah, yeah, yeah um and he saw the name he's like is this yours and and <laughs> you're like yeah it is and he's like oh okay Thanks, yeah, yeah and he just right. kind of slunk away yeah. after that point i should have like read off of that man damn i don't know i was just so surprised by like the way you were like interacting oh, with this dude that I, it was like i was like watching the matrix bro it was like, <laughs> it was something crazy. that i honestly took with me to the states to the oh, point yeah. where i would i would pick up chicks at parties and oh, um, dude, dude it, was, it was crazy man they would come up to me and they'd be like you're from dubai so, all right so, and I'm, i'd be like oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. And they'd be like so you have like lamborghinis and oh, stuff oh dude what's the weirdest thing you've got when you've said that you were from dubai what's um, the weirdest thing the weirdest thing is okay so this is the most common thing i would get is they'd like so you're Dubaian and I'd be like oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh honey oh honey no that <laughs> that's a CD honey look um the weirdest thing I probably got is um this one chick asked me if um if women are allowed to drive there <laughs> oh shit bro yeah. holy fuck okay really <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No way. all right they have a lot of backwards uh they have, they have a lot of backwards that thoughts about dubai sometimes. well they associate dubai with saudi yeah yeah, I, yeah that you know be, yeah, I, yeah. I guess but um why what is your most weirdest uh <laughs> okay so my weirdest i've gotten a lot of what you've got but mm-hmm. i think the weirdest one was i was yeah bro i was in an interview with right. um for this student it was have you heard of isaac no. A I E S E C. It's like a student run organization that's like a it's a global run student organization with local chapters in different universities uh-huh. um, that promote cross cultural, cross country student interaction. Okay. So kids from like for example Canada will go to India. Right. Um, for an exchange and kids from India will go to Canada and like it's all taken care of. The Isaac kids will like take care of fucking Manik was in it. Oh shit. Yeah, in really? like the Indian the, the Mumbai chapter. Okay, I could see him yeah, yeah. in that. <laughs> he's like a politician. Yeah. He's great. I haven't he's seen him in a while. He's yeah, so yeah. good in politics. I can imagine him. He's like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I was I was in the interview for that for social for a, like a social media specialist production position. Okay. Unpaid. Uh-huh. And I was getting interviewed by I don't know if I can say this, but I was getting <laughs> interviewed by this like hardcore Orthodox Jewish girl. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah. And um when she asked me where I'm from, I'm like, I'm, I'm from Dubai, right? <sighs> and she's like, so she said two really weird things uh-huh. where the first thing she's, and it was, and it was all, it was in a matter of like a few seconds. So it took me a little bit of time to like process yeah, what yeah. she said. And I was in an interview. So for me, it was like a very professional kind of a thing. Right. And she's like, oh, Dubai. So we're in India. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, what the fuck? And she's like, oh yeah, we're, we're in India. And I was like, no, 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 Dubai's in the Middle East. Yeah. And she's like, oh, I'm from the Middle East too. I'm from, I'm from Israel. I was like, oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So how do you not know this? <laughs> right. I was like, um, and then she's like, oh, so do you worship cows? What? Right. What? <laughs> and, I was, and I was like, yeah. what? She's like, yeah, like uh, Dubai's in India, right? Right. So she was still on the Dubai's in India part. Yeah. yeah. And because I said, I'm from India, she's like, oh, so you worship Cows. Oh wow! Right, and so I was like, "Yeah, man, yeah, 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 yeah buddy." I was like, "Yeah." I was like, oh, yeah, that's so it was it was a weirdest interaction, and uh, that's the weirdest thing I got. I've had more interesting experiences than weird experiences. Okay. I think a lot of people, a lot of women, exoticize me. Right, right, right. right? Yeah, Where I'm like, I know I hung out with the hottest fucking males, <laughs> like just like. Francesco, who's from Italy, like mm. beautiful Italian, fucking sculpted by Michelangelo kind right, of guy. Right, Greek god. Like time. Greek god, yeah. right? Um, I have like other friends that are, you know, really good looking and I was kind of in the corner like, yoo right? <laughs> uh, like kind of like the, like the funny short kid. Right, right, right. Um, but I felt like a lot of the times people exoticize me. Okay. And I was really, really happy when all my friends were in relationships because I was the last option. Ah, where yeah. I was like, yo, you have no choice but to resort. <laughs> right, right, right. So like, you might as well. And soccer, right? when they're picking the oh, teams, yeah. the last kid still gotta get picked. It's like last kid still. I mean, you know, like guys gotta eat, but um, <laughs> literally and figuratively. But um, it, was, it was, it was, it was the weirdest thing. Um, right. Yeah, I feel like it's the same. I mean, I've heard stories about people that we went to high school with when they had very similar, like similar 
kind of experiences. Mm. Bro, have you ever had experiences with like p- people who've never interacted with a person of color? Oh yeah, oh yeah, a bunch of them, man. Um, like I, uh, I don't know if I've never mentioned it on this podcast actually, but I was in a fraternity, and oh, yeah. it was uh, predominantly white men. Uh, it was oh, like eighty right. percent. I don't know why I said men. Like a fraternity, right. like, it's, <laughs> it's like women. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. What's it? The fucking American Pie thing. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like Dude, mix, I, like... I went in thinking that fraternities were like it was American, American Pie, pie yeah. and I was like, where are the where are the origin? <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> you know, I was like, yo, it's not there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, no, I've I've had a bunch of interactions where they would just ask me like the most like. Absurd questions, man. Right. But yeah, like um, I can't, I can't even remember off the top of my head because there were so many. But I, after a point, I just yeah. would entertain them and oh, like, yeah. speak like they were true. Oh, and dude. I'd be like, oh, totally, man. And they'd like have their eyes They'll open. flip out. Yeah. You know what I kind of realize is a lot of people that I've met who've never interacted with a person, not necessarily of color, but a person from a different country, right. is a lot of. Okay, this is what kind of annoys me is immigrant people that are born and raised in Canada or raised in Canada mm. get more offended than us okay do you know what yeah, i mean yeah, and yeah, it's I the weirdest totally thing because i get their points of view right where they're curious about who we are yeah because we are very different than the media stereotype that they see on tv but nowadays everything's so politically correct to that oh for sure that's why i fucking hate that yeah, you know, man, it's the, the... just uh i mean um okay this is how i kind of play it is i try to break that right mm. so if 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 someone is saying something to me and this has happened a few times where i was at a friend's aunt's house for dinner and they're a really well off family and i was talking about the one time i got stopped at new york mm-hmm. right and yeah. i was like randomly searched yeah randomly been searched. There, done that. oh yeah, yeah it was like yeah. the funniest thing and yeah. i i get it right like look at me right right in my, like I, I look like the stereotype, right? right? right yeah. Um, I look like the person they expect me to look like. But right. th- to, to look this way is my choice. It's not like a religious thing for me well, to keep a beard. You, you know? look like you would like direct an indie horror film. You know oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, just like, grow out my hair so a little much. bit more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I get why I was stopped. I get the questions. Mm-hmm. Um, so what I try to do is I break the stereotype with not being politically correct. Okay. So I talk about things that generally they think that a Muslim, a brown Muslim kid wouldn't talk about. Right, right, right. right, right. Um, or shock I, factor. Right, like, like the shock factor, because what happens is if you conform to the stereotype that they're used to, yeah, yeah, yeah. they will still have the same image of the general population. So people actually call you Arab. Oh yeah, right? yeah. that's what I got first. That's what yeah. everyone thought right. of me as first. And then when I got towards the last year of my university right. in my fraternity, I've been there for four years. I'm like, they're you up. guys know I'm in <laughs> right? right? here. Like we're having a meeting and right. they're like, no, but you're from Dubai. And I'm like, so, where right. are you raised? But like, you know, yeah. It was, I mean. Curry jeans still run wild. Like, Dude, I, um, I kind of like laugh at it. Yeah. Cause yeah. I'm, like a fucked up human being in terms of my sense of humor mm-hmm. and so i make those jokes so i've had people say that to me and i find it hilarious <laughs> i like that i feel like that's the best right. way to you know break the stereotype i feel like it's intention yeah right like yeah. what is your intention exactly. behind this exactly exactly and and I'll, okay I'm, I'm i'm gonna say this i think the turning point happened i was very very left thinking okay and i've kind of gone more towards the libertarian Dude. side okay or like the, I want to say I'm in the middle. Right, right, right. Right? Um, and I think the flipping point was, was, was this. There is an event that happens in, C- in Toronto called CNE, Canadian National Exhibition, where it's a huge like, outdoor thing with rides and food trucks and, and games and stuff like that. It's, ah, okay. it's, 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 it's huge. Right. So I was there with, with a girl, like a white, like she was, from, she was actually from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Okay. Yeah. She was in Canada studying something. Um, my ex-girlfriend. Um, all right. um, I was there with her and there was a YouTuber, if you've heard of Adam Saleh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, he, he was there. So I recognized him mm-hmm. and I was like, and there were people taking pictures with him. People that look like me. I wouldn't expect a white person to know him. Yeah. Or like, even if they do, his, his main core population is people that look like me or Muslim people, Muslim immigrants um, from like a, you know, different backgrounds, whether you're South Asian, whether you're Arab, you know, whether you're African, it's, it's more of like the brown shade, the shades of brown population, right? right That's right, his right, like right. target core audience. But you, you found the opposite when you were there? No, so that? I, so the people taking pictures with him were of that, okay, right? Okay. And there was a, there was a guy operating one of the gaming stands. Mm. And so I took a picture with him cause like, you know, 
why not? Right? Yeah. And so I was like, I, I took a picture with him. And so the guy says he's like, uh, oh, he's famous in your community, eh? Mm. Right? Mm. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he's, um, you know, he's, um, he's, he's well known. And the girl that I was with was kind of like, what do you mean his community? Well, he's like, well, he kind of looks like you. Uh, yeah, yeah, he was right? just describing him. No, no, no. Um, and the girl got more offended than I did. <laughs> What I realized was the guy that asked this probably didn't know. And he just saw a bunch of brown people taking a picture with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So in his mind, he's like, oh, this is, this is the, the people that know him right, are right, people right. that look like him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are people of his background, of his cultural background. And so initially I was like, I kind of took offense to it. I'm like, but wait a minute. Like, is it really, is yeah. it really that much to take offense to it? Yeah. He was probably just making a statement. Mm. I didn't know his intention behind it. But it made se- like what he said made sense. If like you're on the street and ten brown guys come to you and take pictures, yeah, the guy would ask. He would probably think you're famous with those brown people. Right. And right? It's funny, man. The after I came back, the one question that I got the most from my brown brothers um, back over here was, oh, yeah. um, what, I, they wanted to know. The first thing was, how racist is it over there? Like, are they racist? <sighs> that's that's the thing I've gotten the most. Yeah. And I would say, like in terms of what you're saying as well. It's not racism, it's just, I would say for me, what I've experienced, it's more curiosity for sure. that's misunderstood as racism. Definitely. In, in a lot of the times, that's, that's what I've taken it to, but it, it more along the lines of they just want to know more about you, but they Definitely. have no other way of describing it. Of you course. Know what I mean? um, no, that's exactly the same thing where I feel like they're, they're just unaware, right? Right. Um, and to make them aware, you, if, if you are... A different person than what they see mm-hmm. your job or at least I feel like my job as a outspoken brown Muslim guy um, is to change the stereotype not by criticizing them yeah but by making them aware of hey yes what you see is true and yeah. some of it some of it may be false but a lot of it is true right but there's a lot of people like me right right, right? If you criticize them for something that they're curious about, even if the intention is slightly off, you're gonna just impart more racism. You're gonna be like, "Yo, I asked a brown guy, and he fucking flipped out on me." Yep, yep, right, yep, yeah. And uh, like I've seen it happening where like these these kids get into argument with so this if you if you've seen like preachers on the side of the street. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Right, yeah. where they're like talking about Christianity or like against something oh, yeah, against yeah. Uh, religion. So I see these people get really riled up yeah. and start arguing with them. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, like, what's the... Like, I'm like, yo, just carry on with your day, bro. Exactly. Like, it's We're not, it's not making on. a difference, right, right, you know? Right, right. It's yeah. not making a difference in your life. Just just, just carry on and, you know, get on with your day. Like, it's, it's not personally affecting you, is it? Right, right, right. I don't believe in trauma. I don't believe statements can be so bad that you have to go to... Like, okay, let me put it this way. Mm. I feel like what's happening now is we're being grouped together. So there's right. no individual, like there's no individual, how, how the fuck do you say that word? Individuality. Yeah, right. right. There's, there's no that word. Right, right, right. Um, wow, just spazzed out. Yeah, yeah no, there's um, some words that yeah. I have a lot of uh, trouble. So what I feel like is like we're, we're grouped together, yeah. right? And you're not able to be the, your own person. Mm, so mm-hmm. what happens is when, when you are looked at through a lens by a person who's different from you, yeah. they view you collectively. They don't view you as individuals. And what do you think is to blame for that? The media? Or oh, I think, it, um... man, I want to say it's the left. Okay. Yeah. Right? I, 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 <laughs> I, I kind of, I have a friend in Canada um, who's a Trump supporter. Yeah. Right? And we disagree on a lot of things, mm. right? But... What I what I kind of realized is he's he he had a debate once on campus about safe spaces, right? About how spa- safe spaces shouldn't be there. Yeah, and like that was the first time where I would listen to him and I'm like, yo, this guy's this guy's speaking sense. This guy's speaking more sense than like the person talking about the emotion, like the emotional quotients. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and that's kind of when the switch flipped when I realized that hey, if you're in a country like that, mm. discourse, political freedom, freedom of speech. And the ability to express your ideas is very important. Yeah. If there's no parameter for hate speech, mm. is hate speech really a thing? Because taking offense can vary from person to person. It's their perception of the right. Thing. Yeah. But if it's not laid out politically, mm. how do you define it? Yeah. Right. And he said a really cool thing while he was in the debate, where he said we should be concentrating on individuals rather than group. Right, right. 
And the, so the debate was about traumatized people going into a safe space and, you know, kind of being in a safe space and yeah. doing safe space things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, And what he was saying, he's like, no, like, we don't need it. You need to toughen up. That's why you're out in the world. Yeah. Right? And I, and when I think about it, I'm like, a lot of the experiences that I had, if, if I had the mentality, if, if, I, have a, if, if I had a victim mentality, of mentality staying, staying almost in a safe space, right, you wouldn't have grown. Man. I wouldn't have grown, man. Right. I wouldn't have grown... Um, I wouldn't have grown in terms of my career. Mm. I wouldn't have grown socially. Yeah. I wouldn't have grown mentally because I would be offended by every, any and everything said to me. Right, right, right. Right? Um, I, yes, there is sexism going on. Yes, there is racism going on. I don't think it's institutionalized. Mm. Um, there are individual cases of that and there may be cases of widespread which we should all fight against. Yeah. But it's not institutionalized. Yeah, right, right? right. It's It's not to the extent where organizations purposely don't pay women mm. because they're women. <laughs> I work with, my company is led by women. Oh yeah, mine too. Mine right? Too. Yeah, yeah. When I look at examples, I, okay, I think of myself as politically unaware. Right. I'm open to ideas from both sides and I agree with ideas from, from, from both sides and disagree mm -hmm. with ideas from, from both sides. But when I look at personal examples, my mom mm. is really, really, you know, she's, she's at a great position, okay. almost surpassing my dad. Hmm. Right, but that's because she's put in the time and the effort to reach that point. Right, right. Right. She's worked to get there. Of course. Yeah. I mean, she's she's a principal of a school, but she, I remember her coming home at oh, like wow. eight. Okay. I remember her coming home at eight or nine p.m. sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So she's not cutting corners. Right. Which is why I think equality of um, uh, e equality of opportunity mm. and equality of outcome are two different things. And, and what do you right. feel about? Um, sorry to cut you off. Yeah, no, for sure. No, no, no. Yeah. Okay. Um, what do you feel about that? Uh, on the, touching on that topic about women, um, kind of reversing the roles nowadays in terms of pay, and even I've seen so many women who get paid a lot more than their significant other, and I've seen that it can kind of be. Um, did not I don't want to say use the word emasculating, but kind of like a, a hit to his pride when he's Coaching. not the breadwinner and the supporter of the family. Right. Obviously, that's not the case everywhere because there are a lot of males that oh, can, yeah. you know, know in their mind this is good for both of us because yeah. my significant other is making yeah. a lot as well. But what do you think about the aspect of the woman not staying at home, um, rearing a child anymore, bringing them up about it as opposed to going out and providing for the family now? Okay, so I kind of think of it in two ways, right? Mm -hmm. The one, the way, the first way I, I think of it is um, the the problem going on right now with our generation is we don't have enough you know the the opportunities that that we're getting yeah aren't providing us with a substantial ability to grow like the baby boomers were yeah, yeah. right where they could work for like a summer I I'm not like I'm not too sure of the exact uh, statistic I'll have to look it up but I was listening to to a Joe Joe Rogan's um, mm. podcast and someone on it was saying about how the baby boomers could work for a summer and pay off their college yeah tuition right? right 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 so that's not happening so the way I look at it is if the female is in a position of earning higher mm -hmm. because she's more qualified okay I'll give an example my cousin who's 28 she is a PhD mm. And she's also, she just completed her MD mm. and she's doing her super specialization. She's a doctor. Wow. So she's pulling a substantial amount of money. Of course. Right? Yeah. Uh, the, the, the person she's getting married to is also a doctor. Okay. So they're both kind of balancing it out. But even if she, for example, if she was with someone who wasn't earning enough and he couldn't find a job, she would still be the breadwinner because she's qualified enough to get a position like that. Right, right, right. right. I feel like guys, okay. The way I think of it is either you get on her level mm. or don't complain. Right. Right? Right. So if she's earning more than you, that's because she's worked for it. Mm. And she's she's achieved it, whether it's through education, right. whether it's through opportunity, skill, right. talent. She's achieved that, that level. Exactly. So if you want to reach her level, right. put in the same amount of effort as she has. Of course. And vice versa. Of course. I, I'm right? not going to sit here and say that it, women don't earn as much as men. There's a lot of studies that say uh, about how they just don't ask for certain things, like for appraisals. And is it the Jordan nature. B. Peterson thing? It is, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That, that is exactly yeah, yeah. what I was uh, referring yeah. to, actually. But, um, the, but the other side of the coin, which I would say from my own personal experience, oh. is they're not taken as seriously in the workplace. When, when in terms of their opinions and things like that, I've just seen kind of them being shrugged off in a room full of men. For sure. But 
I have not seen to the point where they are not getting paid equally as men. I just feel Definitely. like. I mean, so. you know what? I think it's like a, it, it's like it's it's two sides of the coin because I'm not too sure how it is in North America. I've never pro, like professionally worked in North America. Yeah. But I've heard stories about like I was recently speaking to a friend of mine who said that she was getting kind of remarks by her superior about something and he mm. was very bossy and she she kind of told him off, which yeah. is wrong. Like everyone has an equal say in the workplace, of regardless course. of your gender or age or sexual orientation. You know, if you're working in that organization, you have something, you're bringing something to the table. Mm. Everyone has a right to be heard out. And then I look at it here. Um, the Whether it's my mother, mm. she is, you know, whether it's my mother or the women that I work with in my organization, men listen to them. Okay. Right? Yeah. And so I look at it that way where I see my mom having conversations with male, you know, with, with men who are, um, who are progressing in terms of, or who are really well off, really well placed, yeah. but she stands her ground and they listen. Wow. Right? Yeah. So I think a lot has to do with and I, you know what? I agree. I think it's tougher for women because they're taken. I mean, in 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 cases, they're, they're they're taken less seriously than men. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know the statistic on this. I don't know how true this is. But in personal experience, yeah, I've seen it happen. I've seen where seen women it. are are taken less seriously than men. But then they've they've made their place. They, and they, once they've right, worked very hard for it. And once they've made their again. place, everyone listens. Yeah. Right. If my boss says something, people will listen. Fucking, yeah. I listen. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm I'm like one of the most ADHD people out there, and I listen to what she says. I take her um, constructive criticism positively, and I work on it. Right, right, right. Super smart lady. My mother's super smart lady. I see these people, I'm like, yo, like, they, they've pushed it. Right, right. Right, they've pushed the envelope for women working. Yeah. So if two women in the Middle East, mm -hmm. a, a, a region that's supposedly supposed to be oppressed, yeah. if they can do it, yeah. you know, in a... In a society that's free, there's a possibility you are going to face more challenges than men, given, mm. right? Yeah. But there is a possibility, and that's, right? That's a beautiful thing, man. I think at this point, we're just going to take a break and we will be right back. For sure. Cool. Guys, we are back. So I kind of wanted to touch upon um, the dating scene there in Canada and how, you know, in terms of... Because when I was in Buffalo, personally, I... I've only had a couple of interactions in terms of dating. I never really got serious. I like to be, you know, a kind of lone wolf, For sure. staying uh, single a lot of the times. And I found it to be, what's the word I'm looking for? I feel like people over there take it in terms of they don't um, get attached too easily. And it's, it's more of, well, this was my experience anyway. I found that people were more ready to break things off quicker than in another country like say India where it's more serious. It's more long term. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like it was pretty much the same thing in in Toronto when I was there because there's a lot of options, mm -hmm. right? And uh, a lot of people, especially my age, don't want to be tied down into something serious. Yeah. But you know what's really funny is I feel like the mentality is kind of changing very slowly mm. where people are realizing that... Um, going long term may not be as bad as they thought it was okay right but a lot of factors kind of play into it like i remember i used to be in situations where um i used to have an interaction with a girl and she's would be like i'm looking for something long term yeah and i was like yo me too but i feel like they kind of get they and it's justified this okay so i'll put a little bit of context yeah um behind it in my last year of uni, mm. I wasn't sure where I was going to be, okay. right? So I, I, I didn't know if I was going to continue living in Canada or come back to Dubai. Right. Um, and so there were a few interactions where like I got along really well with, with, with these girls. And then as soon as they found out that I'm, my, my future with regards to where I would be is a little bit shaky, they would be like, man, I don't know. Because like if you're going in a year, what's the point? Right. 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 Um, and so what happened throughout my four, four and a half years there was I was generally the same thing. I was, um, I was a lone wolf yeah. for the most part, at yeah. least. Um, but yeah, and it's, it's, it's really weird because it was, it was either being very single 
yeah or uh, attracting a lot of attention there was mm. nothing in the middle mm. right and a lot of people crave that thing in the middle yeah, yeah. where like you have to have something steady going on where right. like so it's either like you have no one or you have a lot of people showing attention in you yeah, yeah. there's no there's no middle ground at least for me that that was the case um for me personally what i kind of realized and i'm not too sure if like this happened to you but coming from a asian background like a south asian background mm. or like a background from from here mm -hmm. we my perception of dating was very different yeah you know what i mean yeah <clears throat> absolutely like i remember here where i'm like oh you want to be boyfriend and girlfriend and this was in grade 12. yeah yeah, yeah. and like you just start start like being in a relationship from like the the, the get-go there was no like process of getting to know each other oh yeah right oh, yeah, yeah. And I went with that mentality to Canada where like people take months to get to know each other and then date and yeah. there's like the period. Like it's like six months in Oh yeah, it's like, like, what are we? And it's like, I'm like, seeing him. I'm right. talking to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's these different labels that go on right. with different phases attached. Right. And I never got that. Yeah. So I always had a problem with judging what stage we're at, we're at right now. How can we only be friends? Right. And then there was the flip side of it where I used to, I used to meet girls right. uh, you know uh through friends or through you know if i was at like a party or university and i used to get invested really quickly yeah and this happened like two or three times and they were like whoa 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 like i'm not ready for it but then the hints i used to get was like oh i'm, I'm sure she's like ready to date yeah yeah but but i guess not i guess i like took it like the wrong way yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? so i guess was... that's kind of a downfall of me as well man i wear my heart on my sleeve a lot of the times okay. and i found that it, they can either take it and reciprocate or they can just take it and crush it completely. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? But it sounds like in your situation, they were looking yeah. for that double D, you know what I'm saying? Dude, that, dude. That Dubai, <laughs> and Dubai daddy. Dude, you know Dubai. <laughs> dude, I remember that was actually a term where we used to be... Uh, we used to we used to have a close group of friends, and my nickname was Daddy Dubai. <laughs> Are you serious? right? It was it was it was Daddy Dubai. But then my other friend from Dubai made that as his Instagram handle, so I guess that was official for for you know for for him now. Oh uh, yeah, a couple of friends of mine used to playfully call me Sand N Word. <laughs> oh no way! Yeah, yeah, yeah that used to be. I was like, but were well, they were they white? It was in or a were... loving way. Yeah. Okay. No, but it was it was a strange thing. It, I mean. It's it's so weird to think about it now because I don't have time now. Mm. Um, mm. Where I, I don't have time to to, to meet someone yeah. and I and I don't even think about it. Right. What also happens is I feel like women in North America. Yeah. I mean, I man, I feel like, and I don't want to come across as like, right, right. you know, no, speak your right. Story. But um, a lot has to do with the situation you're in, mm. right? Dubai gives you a very comfortable lifestyle, which is great. Yeah. But the 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 downside of it is, you don't mature as quickly, mm, right? I can see that. So it's a very you, sheltered life. It is yeah. right, and it's great because you like Dubai is a country where you get everything you need. Mm. Great for like anyone coming from like around the world. But the downside of it is when you grow up in a protective environment, right. you're not exposed to the harsh realities of the world. Mm. Um, and the people that come out of it, especially who stay here, may be a little bit, you know, they, they may not have the perception of someone who has lived in North America, lived in Europe, and has to struggle. Right. There is struggle here, but I, and I'll tell you what I mean. I, most of my friends that are women there, they have worked since they were 16, mm. paid off everything by themselves, yeah. and just talented women, just mm. like really, really good at their craft whether it's politics, whether it's business, like these, these girls are fucking running it, you know? Mm -hmm. And they're not letting anything come in their way, which is fantastic. Oh, yeah. They're like paving the way for themselves and, and like other women, which is great. Yeah. You know, they're not caring about cultural, social norms. They, they know that if they're not, nothing's gonna be handed to them on a silver spoon. Right. And they're building up to it. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's really weird because it was, it was either being very single yeah. Or uh, attracting a lot of attention. There was mm. nothing in the middle, mm. right? And a lot of people crave that thing in the middle. Yeah. Where yeah. like you have to have something steady going on. Where right. like so it's either like you have no one or you have a lot of people showing attention in you. Yeah. yeah. There's no there's no middle ground. At least for me, that that was the case. Um, for me personally, what I kind of realized, and I'm not too sure if like this happened to you, but coming from a Asian background, like a South Asian background mm. or like a background from, from here, mm -hmm. we, 
my perception of dating was very different. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, <clears throat> absolutely. Like, I remember here where I'm like, oh, you want to be boyfriend and girlfriend? And this was in grade 12. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, you just start, like, being in a relationship from, like, the, the, the get-go. There was no, like, process of getting to know each other. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah. And I went with that mentality to Canada where, like, people <laughs> take months to get to know each other and then date. And yeah. there's, like, the period. Like, it's, like, six months in. Oh, and yeah. It's like, like, what are we? It's like, I'm like, seeing him. I'm right. talking to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's these different labels that go on right. with different phases attached. Right. And I never got that. Yeah. So I always had a problem with judging what stage we're at, we're at right now. Yeah, so um, like you were saying before. Oh, yeah, so out. the camera actually died. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we had, to, uh, so we had technical difficulties. Right. So, so we were yeah. talking about the difference in dating here and there. Yeah. Yeah, and it's definitely, I feel like uh, over there, it's just, um, you know, the... The, the women there, as we were talking about, mm. are just, uh, they've, they've been through so much. And yeah. they've not been through so much in like a negative way, but they've been exposed to, to much more. Yeah. So their outlook is a little different, uh -huh. right? And um, I feel like their outlook may be a little bit more mature than some of the girls that I know here. Okay. And hey, that may not always be true. Like there's plenty of great people here too. Mm. But just in, you know, looking at it from both perspectives, I don't know if you would agree, but it's it's almost more like um, girls there and even guys there are just more responsible. I agree. Right? I agree. And I feel like it's the same thing of like people that went to India yeah. from here because they were exposed to right. a lot more. They were exposed to something different. Right. If, right. If, like even if it wasn't a lot more, it was something different. So they had new experiences, new things that they learned. And I feel like that really plays into, um, that really plays into like my personal my personal uh, kind of viewpoint of when I'm out to find someone or when I'm talking to someone mm. really comes into play. Right, and yeah. I feel like perspective is a lot, uh, it's a lot, it gets a lot bigger as you go to different places. You've been to Kenya, you've stayed here, you've gone to India, now you went to Canada yeah. and back. So yeah. that's, I feel like that's a very vital thing in the game. Um, sure. Uh, a quick, uh, do you want to give a quick shout out to the people of what you're up to nowadays and where they can find you at? Oh yeah, so uh, right now I'm working at nine to five, but it's mm -hmm. it's going great. Um, yeah, but I um, I'm I'm trying to do a lot of photography, which is what I got started with. Okay. So you can follow me at um, you can follow me on Instagram at three the number three mm -hmm. fd underscore. Right. So if you can link that, we'll, we'll, we'll link that down. in the description yeah. below. Um, and yeah, so that's pretty much just photography that I do. Okay. Um, but yeah, if you ever want to like reach out and talk about stuff, hey, like absolutely, always, brother. Always uh, we have that. a lot more to talk about sure. next time and cover. And uh, it's been great having oh, you dude, on. It's been a while. And, uh, oh, yeah, man, dude. I appreciate you coming on, bro. Damn. Um, yeah, guys, thanks for watching, and yes. we'll catch you on the next one. Peace. <laughs>speak this openly because i was kind of like thinking <laughs> yeah. about it and i was like yeah no it's it's i like to uh just kind of speak about whatever as long when does it open. come out um i want to say i'm shooting for by the beginning of the week so like sunday we'll oh like this this Sunday. yeah so i'll probably edit it all through tomorrow and oh, then yeah. i'll post it so like this sunday Perfect. is what i'm aiming at